All right, today I will be describing the five cranial nerves that are of most interest to speech language pathologists and individuals working in the field of communicative disorders and sciences. We, so um, we can see here that the five nerves that are of particular interest to us are highlighted in yellow. And I will be starting with the trigeminal nerve and working clockwise. So the trigeminal nerve is also known as nerve number five. It's located at the level of the pons and the brain stem, and it has both sensory and motor functionality. The trigeminal nerve is responsible for mastication and skin sensation on the face. Now, lesions to this nerve may result in trigeminal neuralgia, which can be treated through various medications such as carbamazepine, which is an anticonvulsant. Um, and surgical options do also exist for treating trigeminal neuralgia. Another issue that may arise from damage to the trigeminal nerve is jaw clenching and chewing problems, um, which can be treated by a speech language pathologist and sometimes a physical therapist. And as you can see right here, the trigeminal nerve depicted in green is the largest of the cranial nerves. Next, we'll move on to discuss cranial nerve number seven or the facial nerve, which is right here in pink, much smaller than the trigeminal. Um, it also has both motor and sensory functionality and is located at the level of the pons. And the facial nerve innervates muscles responsible for facial expression. <clears throat> so that is the motoric function. Um, now the sensory function is that the facial nerve is responsible for taste sensation to the anterior two thirds of the tongue. And thirdly, the facial nerve does have some parasympathetic functionality, including tear and saliva secretion. Damage to the facial nerve may result in Bell's palsy or facial palsy, which is drooping of a portion of the face, which creates asymmetry. And um, an impaired taste, uh, impaired taste sensation to the anterior two thirds of the tongue may also result from damage to the facial nerve. Now, Bell's palsy may be treated by um, corticosteroids, but it oftentimes clears up on its own um, and there isn't a lot of need for intervention. Um, physical therapy can also be helpful in treating Bell's palsy. Now, other problems that may arise from damage to the facial nerve um, include excessive saliva production and an inability to close one's eyelids and raise the eyebrows. Um, for this latter condition, there are a couple of surgical options that exist. And as far as excessive saliva production goes, um, oftentimes uh, positional and postural changes will correct this, though surgery um, can also be an option for that condition. Next, we will move on to the glossopharyngeal nerve, which is nerve number nine, and it is down here in dark green. Um, located at the level of the medulla, the glossopharyngeal nerve does have sensory and motor functions. Um, it's responsible for a sense of taste to the posterior one-third of the tongue, as well as pain, touch, and temperature sensation to the tonsils and the pharynx. It innervates the muscles of the pharynx and the tonsils with motor and sensory fibers. So motorically, the glossopharyngeal nerve is involved in um, the swallowing mechanism. Now, damage to uh, CN number nine may result in loss of taste sensation to the posterior one third of the tongue, as well as glossopharyngeal neuralgia, paralysis of the soft palate the and the pharynx, um, which may lead to swallowing issues ultimately manifesting in dysphagia. Um, glossopharyngeal neuralgia can also be treated by carbamazepine, and as far as dysphagia goes, speech language pathology will probably be required for treatment. Next, we'll move over to the hypoglossal nerve, which is CN number 12. The hypoglossal nerve is located at the level of the medulla, and it strictly has motoric functionality. It controls the muscles of the tongue and assists in motor speech production and swallowing. Lesions to this nerve may result in lingual paralysis and tongue vacillations, which may give rise to the dysarthria or slurred speech. So speech language pathologists may be called upon to create a rehabilitation plan for patients suffering from dysarthria as a result of hypoglossal nerve damage. Next, we have the vagus nerve, which is um, cranial nerve number 10. And this has both motor and sensory functionality as well. It's the longest of the cranial nerves, sometimes known as the wandering nerve. And it's located at the level of the medulla inferior to the glossopharyngeal nerve. 
The vagus nerve innervates the soft palate as well as the larynx and the pharynx and some abdominal muscles um, and allows for movement of our neck and thorax um, and it is also responsible for epiglottal sensation. Lesions to the vagus nerve may result in loss of swallowing ability, par paralysis of the larynx and pharynx, which may ultimately manifest in dysphagia. So rehabilitation plans laid out by an SLP um, may correct um, swallowing disorders and dysphagia. Okay, thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoyed it.